What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Esther. Esther chapter 4. And as we've been seeing so far in the book of Esther, um, there's a lot of types and shadows. Esther represents the bride. Uh, more specifically, the 144,000. Haman can represent uh, God. Or no, uh, King Ahasuerus can represent God. And Haman, as we saw in the last chapter, the Antichrist. And there's uh, not too much new here in Esther 4. Uh, at least not yet. God, maybe God will reveal something to me along the way, but here in Esther 4, let's just get into it. Esther 4. When Mordecai learned of everything that had been done, speaking about um, Haman making the decision to destroy all the Jews, and this is something that is going to happen here again in the last days. And uh, we know what's going to happen. So we have to sound the alarm as we're going to see later in the chapter, but let me continue. When Mordecai learned of everything that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went into the midst of the city and wailed loudly and bitterly. And he came as far as the king's gate, for no one was to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. In each and every province where the command and decree of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and mourning, and had, and many had had on sackcloth and ashes spread out as a bed. And this is something that isn't done these days, you know. I mean, I guess I guess ashes aren't as easily available and same as sackcloth. But uh but they used to really humble themselves. Back in the day, when seeking God, they used to really humble themselves. Um, and this was a part of the mourning and uh, humbling themselves before God. Uh, putting on sackcloth and being in ashes. Just uh, basically completely humbling yourself. And fasting. Then Esther's attendants and her eunuchs came and informed her about uh, Mordecai. And the queen was seized by great fear because she hadn't known about this is Mordecai. Uh, Esther didn't know yet that th this decision was made, the decision to destroy the Jews. And the queen was seized by great fear. And she sent garments to clothe Mordecai, that he would remove his sackcloth from him. But he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathik from the king's eunuchs. And then Esther summoned Hathik from the king's eunuchs, whom the king had appointed to attend her. Sorry, I'm just... I'm here recording this video out here in this uh, parking lot. And the dude just pulls up right here and stops. 
But this is stuff that goes on with gang stalking, you know, the constant harassment, constant, you know, surveillance, whatever, you know, trying to disrupt me, trying to disrupt the Bible studies. And this is what it is. It's, uh, happens constantly. Sorry, I was just watching because I got a uh, family over here, and uh, that were, that was outside at the time that dude just pulled up and stopped. So, I'm just keeping an eye. But uh, then Esther summoned Hathik from the king's eunuchs, whom the king had appointed to attend her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what what this morning was and what why it was happening. So Esther, so Esther didn't even know. At, at this point, Esther didn't even know. Uh, she was just in great fear that Mordecai was mourning the way he was. So Hathik went out to Mordecai in the city square, in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that happened, everything that happened to him, and the exact amount of money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the elimination of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict, which had been issued in Susa for their annihilation, so that he might show Esther and inform her and to order her to go into the king to implore his favor and plead with him for the people, for her people. So Hathic. And, you know, just in the same way, we know what's coming upon this world. So the those of us who know what's coming upon this world, those of us who know the destruction that's coming upon our people, because judgment begins in the house of God, and, you know, the enemy wants to destroy us in every way. And God knows this, but we need to petition. We need to, to pray for mercy for our people. For believers and pray for mercy for all all people, but um, we know the enemy is trying to destroy us, and of course God knows, but we need to seek Him and pray pray to Him. So Hathit came back and reported Mordecai's words to Esther. Then Esther spoke to Hathit and ordered him to reply to Mordecai. All the king's servants and all the people of the king's provinces know that for any man or woman that comes into the king, into the inner courtyard, who is not summoned, he has only one law, that he be put to death. And unless the king holds out the golden scepter so that he may live. And I have not been summoned to come to the king these 30 days. And they reported Esther's words to Mordecai. And the 30 days is, you know... You know, it's inter interesting because uh, there's, a, there's a month, there's 30 days between uh, my current understanding between the, the abomination of desolation and uh, the beginning of the Great Tribulation, the, the, the last three and a half years. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, do not imagine... This is Mordecai speaking to Esther. Do not imagine that you in the king's palace can escape more than any, more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, liberation and rescue will arise for the Jews from another place. And matter of fact, of course, it's on. It's always pulled up in a different translation than I'm used to for some reason. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for, for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether or not you have attained royalty, or whether or not you have been chosen for such a time as this. 
And this is a famous Bible verse. Who knows whether or not you are born or been chosen for such a time as this. You see, God is in control. He's sovereign over everything. So he chose us to be alive here in these last days. He chose us to reveal his word to. He chose us to reveal his son to. He chose us to reveal to us the days we're living in. He chose us. What are we going to do with that? We need to sound the alarm. We know destruction's coming upon this world. We need to sound the alarm. We know judgment's coming up, coming upon the house of God. We need to sound the alarm. Just like just like they knew that judgment was coming upon the Jews, that destruction was coming upon the Jews, we know destruction's coming upon the world and coming first to the house of God. So we got to sound the alarm. We got to warn the people. We got to warn the world, but we, we got to edify the body. We got to make sure we're right. And our brothers and sisters in faith are right with God and ready and prepared for what may come upon this world. Or what, what is going to come upon this world, but prepared for what may come upon us here in these last days. Because it is written and it will be fulfilled. And I'm not saying it's you. I'm not saying it's me. Maybe all of us, but it may be none of us. But many of us are going to go into captivity here in these last days. And we need to be prepared for that. The enemy is going to try to destroy us. We need to be prepared for that. We have to maintain and endure to the end, no matter what. Let's keep the faith, brothers and sisters. But God chose us to live here in these last days. To proclaim his word. To proclaim his salvation and to warn the people of the coming judgment. He chose us. What are we going to do with that? Let's handle what he's given us correctly. Because we know what's coming. We know what's coming. So we have to warn the people. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa. And fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days. Night or day. And I and my maidens will fast in the same way. And it's reminded me of uh, Hosea 6. Come, let's return to the Lord, Yahuwah. For he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. So let's learn, let's press on to know Yahuwah, to know the Lord. And this is the last three days before the main resurrection and rapture. Go assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa and fast for me and do not eat and drink for three days, night and day. This is Esther, Esther talking to Mordecai. And I and my maidens will also fast in the same way. And thus I will go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and did just as Esther has, had commanded him.
See, God didn't have to choose us. God didn't have to open our eyes to a lot of the stuff that's going on in this world. God didn't have to open our eyes to the days that we're living in. God didn't have to choose us. But He chose us. He chose us for such a time as this. To reveal His Word to To reveal his plan to. To reveal his salvation to. We know what's coming upon this world. And we have to be ready. And we have to make sure everybody else is ready. Let's do all his will and everything. See, we're all called. We're all a part part of the body. We're all different member different members of the body of Christ. And we all have different positions. But we're all called to preach the gospel. We're all called to work for him in some way. And if we know the days that we're living in, if we know if we see the sword coming, if we see the judgment coming, we have to warn the people. We have to rise up. We're the people of God. We are his body. We are his servants. His hands and feet here. So let's do everything we can to serve God to the best of our ability. To sound the alarm. To warn the people. Judgment is coming soon. And it begins in the house of God. But then God is going to deliver us and then judgment comes upon the whole world. So let's edify the body. Let's preach the gospel. Let's shine his light and show his love in everything we do. Let's be ready, brothers and sisters. God chose us for such a time as this. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. There's not a lot of time left. <clears throat> Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. 2020 is not an accident. It's not, not a coincidence. It's not going back to normal, ever. The Bible tells us what's going to happen right before the judgment of God. Right before the tribulation time, the worst period of time in the history of the world and the deliverance when Jesus comes on the clouds for his people. The Bible tells us what's going to happen right before and during that time. And it's all lining up. It's all happening and lining up to happen. It's, it's, I mean, you can't even question it if you really study the scriptures and study the prophecies and and um, see what it is, it's, you can't even question it. It's, uh, we're living in these last days, according to the Bible. And there's no doubt about it. So what you need to do is repent and believe the gospel. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. The word repent means to have a change of mind, a change of heart. Deciding to turn from your ways and turn from your life. Give your life to God. Submit your life to God. Submit your life to Jesus Christ. Turn to Him for salvation. And the gospel, the punishment for sin is death. That's, that's a second death, permanent death of body and soul. But God requires perfection in order to enter His kingdom, in order to live forever. And none of us are perfect. That's why we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. And that's why God sent his son. Jesus was born as a human, lived a perfect life, did nothing wrong. And in his profession, he took on the punishment for us, made the sacrifice for us. So that through faith in him, we receive his perfection. We have our sins wiped away and receive his perfection. And that's the only way to be made right with God is through faith in him and what he did on the cross. If you believe that he died for your sins, that he, that he died for us on the cross, and rose again in order to give us life 
you will receive that life through faith. So repent and believe the gospel because there's got to be a true turning to God as well. You really got to turn to Him. You really got to believe in Him and give your life to Him. You don't have to change to turn to God. You turn to God and He changes you. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. It's the end of Esther 4. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.